It's an honor to be here. Thank you for looking at me. Uh, right here we got a box. And I can do stuff like uh, almost two hours stand in direct uh, contact with the ice. But I learned it in hard nature. Hard nature is merciless but righteous. And he taught me to do things with my immune system, nervous system, the cardiovascular system and my mind beyond my thinking, beyond belief. And it was tested by Professor Hopman. It was tested in New York. It was tested in Finland physiologically with immune system. All kinds of things came out because I exposed myself to the extreme naturally in heart nature. It's my teacher. He taught me. And I think we still got to learn a lot from nature because we are not in balance with nature anymore. It's gone. But for that, we are here. For that, you are there. And I'm going to do my utmost best to convey a message which I got since I was investigated by a blood uh, research wherein I could suppress by thinking and respiratory exercises, which I learned in heart nature, suppress the inflammatory marks in my blood. So we can have power over the body by our mind. But for that, we have to go back to be in balance with nature. Nature is our teacher. And I will try and show it. Now Professor Hopman is coming. She's going to explain data. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, the big question, of course, here is um, how is it possible for a human being to be exposed in an ice bath for one hour and 44 minutes? Well, in order to answer that question, we had to do an experiment because there's no physiology textbook that uh, tells you what happens to a human being in ice. And I will show you a little bit of the atmosphere of the experiment in Nijmegen. You can see here, Wim came to Nijmegen and we exposed him for 80 minutes in ice, like it's now happening here. Op die manier uh, kunnen we de totale huidtemperatuur uh, berekenen. Oké. Okay. De gemiddelde huidtemperatuur. Ja. <coughs> 2, 2, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, Ja, daarna doe ik nog een keer. Ja. Maar dat gaat toch vanuit je vlies, dus ik wil niet opnieuw spreken. Oké, okay, the, the big question that we all face in these days too with the cold weather is how to keep ourselves warm. Because our human body wants to stay at a core temperature of 37 degrees. In order to measure Wim Hof's core temperature, he swallowed a pill, the pill you see here, and that pill travels through his stomach and sits in a splenic area. And in that way, we can precisely measure his core body temperature. And what we expect when he's staying in the ice like this for one hour, one and a half hour, that his core body temperature drops. And we know when it drops 10 degrees, up to 27 degrees, a person dies. But already under 35 degrees, uh, we talk about hypothermia and you really shiver and feel very badly. So the big question is what happens to uh, his core body temperature when he's standing in this ice? Well, that was the first big surprise. I show you the result here of the core body temperature. The blue shade is the area when he is 80 minutes in the ice, exactly like he's in the ice here in a few minutes. And what you see is that the core body temperature drops hardly. It goes from 37.7 to 37.4. 
absolutely not important. So maybe there's a little layer of air between the eyes and the skin, which gives him a bit of isolation. But we measured a lot of skin temperatures too, and that's shown in this slide. And what you see here is many different skin temperatures. They're all around 30 degrees, which is very normal. And what you see is when, when he's in the ice, most of them drop to 5 to 10 degrees. And that's very, very cold. So there's no isolation from an air layer. His shell is very, very cold, gets uh, extremely cold, whereas his core stays warm. And that's very exceptional. And here you see two temperatures that are, this is his, his head, and this is high up his shoulder. That were the areas that, the, uh, that were above the ice. Another remarkable finding is that when we go in the ice, or when we take a cold shower, um, your heart rate and blood pressure goes up tremendously. This is what happens when you, uh, when you go in a cold shower. Your heart rate goes up tremendously. And this is what happened with Wim. His heart rate and blood pressure hardly increased, only at the end of the experiment, so only after 45 minutes to an hour. One other remarkable finding that I would like to share with you is that he increases his metabolism. He can heat up his, uh, his body by doubling his metabolism. During the whole procedure, while he was in the ice for 80 minutes, his energy expenditure was twice as high, and with that he produces extra heat, which, however, cannot explain the fact that his core body temperature does not decrease more. So, what are possible explanations? And I have three, and there may be other, but one explanation could be that uh, Wim is a very, uh, very much into tumo meditation. And from the tumor meditation, which is f f uh, mostly done in Asia, we know that it produces heat. So maybe that's part of his heat production. Also, as Wim was telling uh, a few minutes ago too, it, it creates for him a possibility to control his vessels, control his blood vessels. What we see is that he can separate his core very well from his shell. So this could be an explanation. Another explanation is that Wim has been telling me that he's doing this for years and year, as, years. As a boy of 12 years old, he already jumped into cold water. So maybe it's more of a training effect, and we all could do it if we just expose ourselves gradually to cold. And by that, train our autonomic nervous system and control our circulation. A third explanation could be that he has some genetic advantage to do this, that he has some changes in his cold receptors or changes in his pain receptors that make, him more, that make it more easy for him to do those kind of experiments. We don't know yet. I just gave three explanations. We need to do more studies uh, on them. As you can see, it's, it's really something uh, uh, exceptional. He was sitting in 80 minutes in ice like this. His core body temperature did not drop. Physiologically, we call this a mystery, and uh, we need to do more research to really understand how you can control uh, processes in your body that we have thought so far that we were not able to control uh, voluntarily. So, um, and with this, I would like to uh, to finish my presentation, and I wish <laughs> <laughs> I wish Wim good luck. Wow. <clears throat> I think I think Dr. Hamid, you got to come up here and do it all again because we were we were all watching this guy get buried alive in ice. Uh, so we're going to pretend that this is normal uh, and move forward. I know it, I know it, I know it. I know I can. Uh, sorry? You, you, okay. You don't need to do this to this extreme to have the benefit of a very good cardiovascular system. Okay, let me just repeat what was said. I don't know if you heard it. You don't have to do this. Uh, <laughs> To, to reap the benefits of a, of a healthy cardiovascular system. 
That is good news. For all of us that were thinking, I need some work on my cardiovascular. <laughs> now, you know, when the clock goes off, we'll have to wheel poor Vim off. So one of the ideas worth sharing is... Uh, <laughs> was made famous by a, a young fellow named Harry Houdini. Uh, <laughs> you'd never get into a box that you can't get out of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Unless that box is headed up toward the world moon. But I, I have full confidence uh, Vim's going to be out of there in no time. Again, this is like nothing for him. This is like watching TV. Um, and if you're watching at the Jijinsky right now, I mean, this is right here. It's right here in two dimensions, like everything we've done today. <laughs> I don't know if they're, if, if they're, it's like, are you sure you can't climb out? Because it'd be pretty a trouble if there's ice everywhere. <laughs> the fake snow confetti was annoying. The, the real, the guys from the Stutz Heilberg are going, I really, I totally did not like the ice idea. We stand behind no ice on stage. And <laughs> let me just say, you, you, don't, you don't have to worry till I go over there and start helping pull. <laughs> As long as I'm here just stalling, you know that Vim is safe and sound and there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> except the potential for a slightly shorter coffee break. Again, unless you run the Stutz Heilberg, then the risk is a, a wet spot here that will make this red spot look like a non-existent red spot. And now, uh... <laughs> I'm still staying cool over here. So you know it's all okay. How about the guys who put this box together? This shit does not break apart. Here he comes. I got a good feeling. Here he comes. Fantastic. Fantastic. That is great. Well, I, we, we get a chance to ask uh, Vim a couple of questions. Welcome back. How are you? One more time. Wow. He doesn't, he doesn't need the towel. He is not cold. That's the one problem he does not have. Uh, oh, yeah. Vim, I, I have, a, I have a, a couple of questions for you. Yeah. Are you okay, first of all? Are you all right? I'm totally okay. Uh, Thank you very much for showing that uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm going into extreme and nobody needs to do this. This is my sport, you know? Football is, is healthy to do, you know? But if you want to be top player, you gotta train. So I train to do this. And if you take just a little bit more, uh, you know, your thinking, change it a little to what the cold, because the cold is a warm friend. It makes the cardiovascular system, <laughs> yeah. The cold. Uh, the, yeah. cold, the cold is a warm friend. Let yeah, me, it's let, a warm friend because it trains all the muscles in the, in the veins. Fim, let and me therefore... I, just, I want to ask you a question. And blood is warm. I know, it's a... Streaming better. Cold is warm, war is peace, love is hate. I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, Fim, why, you know something. Why, now, you talked about the science, yeah. but yeah. why do you do this? Not a scientific reason, but what is it? Do you have a personal mission besides, you know don't try this at home? I mean, what is, what is the personal reason that you do this? Um, I developed a method which is uh, relatively easy to adopt, to learn. And it's about, you know, what I learned in the uh, heart nature. Uh, I learned to, um, uh, to um, uh, um, use a different way of breathing which is able to make contact with the immune system and the nervous system to a very, uh, to very deep level. But then, not how, yeah. but why. Why? Oh, what's, why? What's your mission? You said, My why, mission why is do you do it? To show that everybody by their mind uh, can reach more depth within themselves and prevent, we got healing power. We really got it. But if we block it because we say, yeah, I cannot heal myself. I need to go to the doctor, be dependent. I need to take pills, I need to take that, then you won't be uh, having this access uh, toward your own healing power. The, the inner doctor, 
of Paracelsus 2,000 years ago, it was already known and said, and we forgot a little bit about this. We are dependent on outside forces while we have inner power. And by our opening up our mind toward that and be more conscious toward that, we can really feel this inner power, healing power, and uh, prevent from disease. Fantastic. Wim Hof.